time to get started. Good afternoon. I'm Joe Hunter Law, President of the Board of Trustees, and I want to welcome every, everyone to this sixth state of the township. Once a year, we have this gathering to present a big picture look at your local government. My fellow trustees, Tom Bryan, Gwen McFarlane, and our fiscal officer, Dan Burning, uh, want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to come here today. As you will hear in the next few minutes, external forces on local governments are about to necessitate unprecedented changes in the way we provide services to you. Tom, Gwen, and I have to make hard decisions this year, and we're going to need your input to make sure that we know what is most important to you so that we get those decisions right. By way of background, several years ago, Tom, Gwen, and I attended a Hamilton County Township Association meeting. Uh, Senator Bill Seitz was the speaker uh, at that meeting. Uh, he told us that the state of Ohio had a seven to eight billion dollar deficit. The state was spending way more money than they were bringing in. He called the state budget a train wreck coming down the tracks, and he said it was headed for local government. He warned us that one of the ways that Ohio was going to balance their budget was they were going to cut the funds which they had, our tax dollars, which we send to them, and they had traditionally sent back to local governments they were going to cut those, the, those funds that went to local governments as a way of fixing their, uh, their budget woes. He told us that uh, we better not count on those funds in the future. We took his warnings and those of others to heart, and we began several years ago to make big cuts in our, in our township budget. What Senator Seitz didn't know at the time and probably couldn't have foreseen was the state of Ohio, besides making cuts in the local government fund and other funds that came to townships, they also decided to eliminate the estate tax. Traditionally, the estate tax in Ohio um, is a tax where 80% of the funds collected went to the local government where the uh, decedent lived. These funds were, have been a critical source of revenue for Springfield Township over the years, and we've used them to fund capital projects, uh, pave roads, many things that are very necessary. Coupled with the funding cuts and the loss of the estate tax has been the recession, which produced falling property prices, um, which resulted in less money coming to the township as a result of our property levies. All of this has been the perfect storm for the township's finances and other local governments. Because of the cuts that we have made and concessions that our employees have made, um, we're now in good shape financially. But even though we've been able to build up surpluses with anticipating this coming, this is the year when we're going to begin to feel the full force of the decrease in revenue caused by the estate cuts. As your trustees, we're faced with making hard, critical decisions which will affect everyone in our community. We have several options before us. One would be to increase our revenues by going back to you, the voters, and saying we need more levies. We need you to pass more levies to fund the operations of the township and provide the services that we do. Uh, we as your trustees think that that's the wrong approach and it's not sustainable. Our property taxes in Springfield Township uh, are some of the highest in the county. This is because of levies that we have for schools, for township, and also for uh, county levies. Another option that we would have would be to make cuts to keep just cutting our service. Um, we know this is not going to work either. Springfield Township is essentially a service organization. Our biggest expenditure is personnel. Due to the cuts we've made in the last several years, we are running at minimum staffing in all our departments. If we just keep eliminating employees, we will rapidly get to a place where we don't have sufficient resources to operate at all. We wouldn't have enough officers to have an effective police force. We wouldn't have enough paramedics 
to cover all the runs that they have to on a daily basis. We wouldn't have the personnel or the money to fix the roads, plow the snow, keep the parks open. As a board, we know that Springfield Township needs some additional money to offset the state cuts that are coming. Uh, we are considering putting on the ballot an initiative known as the Joint Economic Development District. You've, you'll hear this referred to as a JED. Essentially, a JED uh, would be a uh, payroll tax that would apply to people that are working in the township. A JED in and of itself would not solve all our problems. Just in a moment, our township administrator, Mike Henningkamp, is going to give a presentation on all the options available to us in the ways that we can most efficiently provide services to you. As I said before, the time for making these decisions is this year. We can't put them off. If we're going to survive as a government and fulfill our mission to residents, we must adapt and do so quickly. We have to look at everything we do and ask, is it something we should still be doing? What's the cost for doing that? Is there another way to do it better and cheaper? While there's a part of us that wishes that all of these assaults on local government had never happened, we realize that we have to confront the challenges facing us and recognize them as an opportunity to become an even more efficient, better organization. Changes bring opportunity, and this adversity will make us stronger in the long run. As your trustees, we need your input so that we can make the right decisions. We think our future is bright. If we get this right, we will find a way through these trying times and I would ask that you please listen carefully to Mr. Henningkamp's presentation as he goes into the details. I've hit the highlights. He'll go into the details of uh, how we got where we are, where, where we stand now, and what are some of the things that we're looking forward uh, to to solve these issues. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see everybody out here again. I know there's a lot of uh, familiar faces out in the crowd. It's hard to believe we've, uh, we've been doing this now for, I think, six years. And that's a, kind of a good segue as to where we're going to start today is, is a quick look back at what's taken place over those last five to six years. As Mr. Hunterlaw has uh, alluded to, a lot of change has taken place. A lot of this presentation is going to focus really on the financial uh, challenges that we face, but also want to highlight some of the accomplishments that we've been able to make and really talk about since some of these difficult challenges that we face, what has been our response? Uh, what are some of the actions that we've taken and what have been the results of those actions? And then really focus on as we go forward, uh, the questions, the questions. I think this is the year Really, uh, if, I could, if I could summarize what, what, what needs to happen as we go forward, and I think as the board's been reviewing, it's really some fundamental questions that we have to answer. What are our options that, that will decide uh, our ability to be sustainable as a local government, as a strong community in the, in the future? So that's, uh, that's quickly what we're going to go through. Of course, as we look back in those five years, and as I mentioned, uh, the dominant the dominant uh, aspect of all of that is, of course, the, the change, but it all started with the economy. And it wasn't just a poor local economy or a state or federal, but this was really an economy that's affected the entire world. So we're certainly not exempt uh, or unique in that aspect. This is something that's been going on everywhere. And as a result of that poor economy that we've been facing, uh, I think one of the biggest impacts that, that hit the township was also a, a decrease in assessed valuation. That's property valuations. As the housing market really suffered and we saw you know, property taxes, or uh, we saw uh, values of real estate decrease, that has a huge impact. Springfield Township receives probably about 75 or 80 percent of all of our revenues from property tax. So when the taxes, even though your tax rate didn't go down as property rates uh, drop, we saw uh, an assessed uh, valuations coming in, we actually receive less revenues. And that's really the first time over the last two or three years when that happened, that's really the first time that that's happened uh, probably over the last 18 years, at least uh, certainly during the time that I've been here and this board has been together. 
And then Joe touched on uh, uh, some of the big changes, and those were the decisions made by the state legislature with the changes that they've made, specifically the, uh, the repeal of the estate tax, a reduction in local government fund uh, taxes that we receive, tangible personal property tax. There was a reimbursement that the township used to re receive. That was eliminated uh, a year ago in, in July. And also we've seen a uh, elimination of the public utility tax. All examples of the state keeping local dollars or monies uh, that were that were made available to Springfield Township and keeping those dollars for themselves to balance their budget. And oftentimes when we go through these, really th since the last couple of years, uh, a lot of response that I would get from residents is sometimes as well, you shouldn't get any state money. That's not your money. Well, yes it is. It's your money. It's your money that is generated. The state doesn't have its own pile. These are dollars that are coming from Springfield Township residents. They always have come from Springfield Township residents. They're not coming back to you. They're being kept at the state level. So that's a, you know, a fundamental difference as to what's taking place. As we look at some of the impacts, you can just see some of the staggering numbers. Uh, and I know we've been talking about these really for about the last uh, two years. Uh, but this year, as, as Mr. Hanalal indicated, we'll really get the full brunt in the loss of the estate tax. On average, that's about a million, almost a million and a half dollars per year uh, in lost revenues that we won't receive. Uh, we would expect to see about half of the revenues that we used to receive on local government fund. So this year in 13, about $310,000 less in money, about $40,000 loss to the general fund in loss of uh, tangible personal property tax and public utility tax. And these also affect our other departments, uh, our road district, our fire district, and our police district, all experiencing the loss of revenues at a time, you know, it's kind of, as I think Joe alluded to, it's, it's kind of the perfect storm. And these are some of the impacts. So with these impacts and knowing about those for a variety of, of years, and really I think since about 2009, we start really focusing on what our solution was going to be. And there was no silver bullet, we understood that. And so we began to whittle away in, in as many ways as we possibly could but our goal was always the same. We wanted it to possibly have the least amount of impact back on the services and back to the residents. But since that time, really in our 2009 and 2011 budget, we've reduced our general fund by almost 35%, taking it from $4.8 million down to 3.1. Uh, some of the things that we did, unfortunately, there was some reduction in services as it affected uh, brush and recreation and the ability of, of what we could do on some of our fields. We uh, assigned and restructured with our, all of our departments, with employees. We've reduced some of the contracted services that we used to pay for and brought those in-house. And we've also, unfortunately, not done as many capital improvements and in infrastructure projects because the funding just simply wasn't there. We were effective in increasing in, uh, in some revenue enhancement with the passage of a police levy. Uh, this was a 2.5 mil levy that was passed in May of 2009. And those levy proceeds, at the time, we projected to last us uh, through this past year, through 2012. As you'll see here in a little bit, due to some of the other steps that we've taken, uh, we now have a much longer forecast uh, for the viability of, uh, of that particular levy. In our, uh, in our senior and community services, uh, and actually this, this facility, uh, has been one of our really great success stories. And, and most of this credit, in fact, all this credit goes to Tom Schneider, uh, who's our director of this facility. Back in 2009, we sort of gave Tom a mandate that we wanted this facility and the senior center to be self-sufficient. We knew we couldn't carry it any longer with the general fund, and we made some changes. And through some of the uh, ingenuity and ideas that he had, we've been able to increase revenue facility from the senior center in the Grove by over 300%. Uh, going from about 65000 a year in 2008 to about $220,000 uh, currently. And what those revenues do is they provide for all of the services that we're able to provide back. Uh, a lot of the things that Kim Flam works with Tom Schneider on in our community and our activities all sort of tied uh, together. And so that has greatly minimized our impact on the general fund and allowed this facility uh, to be self-sufficient. Our goal was to have it self-sufficient by 2011. It was, and it now op operates on a, uh, on a slight profit. 2012 was probably our most difficult year from a budget standpoint. 
in terms of some of the really, really difficult and controversial decisions that we had to make. But again, we tried to spread those out in a lot of different ways and minimize the impact to, to the residents. Uh, but it did involve some changes in, in parks and field rentals where we had to charge a user fee uh, for recreational uh, associations that use the field. Uh, we eliminated the rentals of our shelter because we had to eliminate some staffing. And we've changed uh, some of our communication and what we do with Waycross uh, in a more limited fashion, all aimed at saving dollars. Uh, we've been able to s reduce some of the staffing not necessarily in terms of employees with police and fire, but the number of employees that are on duty at any one given time. In fire and EMS, uh, traditionally we had 13 uh, persons, 13 uh, medics and firefighters on duty 24-7. Uh, We've re reduced that down to 11. We actually did eliminate four full-time positions uh, through our admin and service department, as well as five part-time positions. And more importantly, we really focused in on our employees, and our, empl and our employees have partnered with us in many, many ways. Uh, first off, we, uh, we actually redid two fire contracts, or, or I'm sorry, two contracts, one with our police department, one with our fire in 2012, which allowed us to avoid layoffs in those departments. All of the administrative staff and non-contract employees have had salary freezes since 2010, and we've made serious reductions to some of our health insurance benefits and have been able to reduce uh, cost in that area as well. We've looked to try to be creative and gain operational efficiencies with what we've done, and through our development services department and police department, we're now using our police department uh, to do nuisance inspections and zoning violations. Uh, this picks up the slack because we had to lay off two part-time zoning inspectors. And so we now have our police department has stepped up and filled that void. In case of uh, nuisances where we used to pay to have a private contractor do a nuisance cleanup on a property, we're now using in-house personnel in our service department. Very, very effective ways that we're able to save uh, a, a great deal of revenue each year, yet continue to find ways to provide the service. Uh, again, in 2012, uh, we, we were able to uh, restructure some fire districts. There's two areas of the township where we actually contract with neighboring jurisdictions uh, to provide fire service in the past. Uh, that was the city of Forest Park. We were able to uh, reach agreement with Colerain Township uh, for the Pleasant Run Farms area and for the city of Springdale in the Hollydale area. And by virtue of re-engineering these contracts, we saved close to $100,000 from what we previously had with the city of Forest Park. And again, we've reduced our expenditures, things like infrastructure. Uh, we're not making the property acquisitions as we were previous, and we've been able to uh, uh, be very effective with capital improvements by getting SKIP funding. That's a statewide program. State capital improvement uh, program is what that stands for. And we've been very, very successful. John Musselman, our service director, has done an outstanding job of leveraging township dollars and allowing, allowing us to get a lot of major projects done. And again, as we mentioned, there's also been a piece with uh, some revenue enhancement. We are charging uh, athletic field fees uh, for teams to use our fields. Uh, and again, this is a fairly nominal amount. When you hear the amounts, it's $10, $12 an hour. It certainly adds up, however, to the associations because they have lots of hours on there. And it's not intended for the township to turn a profit, but more or less just to try to allow us to try to uh, break even a little bit on some of the expenditures uh, that we incur. 2012 was also important in that we were successful in March of last year passing a one mill fire levy. And as you'll see here in a few minutes, that really extended uh, what we were able to do uh, and it presents a, a much brighter future for the fire department for the next uh, four to five years. Despite a lot of these changes, despite a lot of the things that we've done to modify and take steps because of reduced funding, our departments have still been providing outstanding service and we've been very, very busy. Our police department responded uh, to 23,000, uh, over 23,000 calls for service. We did see a little spike uh, in the crime rate, violent crime is down approximately 7% uh, in 2012, but we did see some increase on the property side, about 11.5% uh, increase on property crime, bringing the overall crime rate up about 5.6%. Uh, 
uh, Springfield Township as well as a lot of communities uh, through not only this region but really the whole Hamilton County area are also seeing similar things. So these aren't necessarily unique to Springfield Township but a lot of, uh, a lot of theft in terms of car break-ins and uh, property break-ins, those types of things. So we you know, always want to remind people to be diligent uh, about what you leave on the front seat of your car. Fire and EMS uh, had record year in terms of call for service. Uh, they responded to over 1,200 fires and over 4,200 calls for emergency medical service, which is uh, the record high for what we've ever seen. We've been able to maintain our average response time uh, for those services at six minutes. And again, we, we alluded to you know, maintain the level of service even though we've reduced uh, some of the costs that we've, especially in our contract areas, which was a big concern. Our service department, uh, probably the most underfunded department that we have here in the township uh, was very busy as well. Uh, they repaved, rejuvenated, and crack sealed over five miles of roadway, which involved 23 streets. It was over 330 tons of hot and cold asphalt mix applied for pothole and large patch street repairs. We replaced over 400 sideway blocks, repaired about eight major headwalls or storm pipes, and did a great deal of work uh, in terms of right-of-way tree work. And you can see cleaned up 169 nuisance properties that took place in the, pro in the township, something that originally had been or previously had been done uh, by private contractors. But again, a reduced staff but and a whole different area of workload uh, applied to them. Our community services and events, and we talked about some of the value of being able to have the senior center and the Grove and the job that Tom and Kim have done uh, in coordinating those activities, but we have provided a great deal uh, in a wide variety of different community events and activities and classes really for uh, residents from all ages um, and interest. In total, we had over 5,500 participants attend uh, over 26 different events that were, were held. And most importantly, uh, a great deal, these, these events and activities came at a nominal or no cost uh, to you, the taxpayer, through donations, through grants and sponsorships. Uh, Kim has been very, very creative in minimizing any impact uh, to the township. So we've actually increased the number of things we're doing and decreased the cost, which is something that uh, is, is really been outstanding. Our energy aggregation program, something that we started back in 2008, uh, continues also to be uh, very, very successful. Uh, in looking at the slide from last year, I think I had a note on there that our anticipation was is that the markets were really uh, softening and it was going to be a tougher time to, to realize a great deal of savings. And that happened a little bit, certainly on the electric side. We didn't see the savings that we've had in previous years, but still in 2012, Residents who participated in our energy aggregation program saved nearly $150 uh, compared to what they would have saved if they stayed with Duke. On the, uh, on the natural gas side, just about $50 per year. And on the, uh, on the average, uh, almost $100 on the electric side. Now that's the average home. Some folks will see more or less depending on the size of your property and whether you have electric heat or gas. Uh, gas heat can, have, can affect that a little bit, but when you look back since program inception back in 2008, uh, over $1,100 has been saved if you've been in that program and, and been participating with us for the last five years. And close to, you know, when you look at it township-wide, over $10 million saved as an aggregate to all township residents. So this has been a program that's been highly successful. Uh, for us, we were one of the first communities to do this, and uh, certainly the board, you know, deserves a lot of credit because it was controversial uh, to a degree in the early years. People didn't understand it, and now almost every community uh, is involved with it, but we were able to do it at a time uh, where we could realize some, some great savings. This, these slides are a little difficult to read. In fact, they're probably very, very difficult to read where you're at, but it, it was something I was trying to get a lot of information on one sheet because you really need to see as to well, where are we. As a result of all of the things uh, that you've done and taken and the, the challenges that we face, uh, to look at our three major funds, our general fund, our police district fund, uh, and our fire district fund, 
I think this gives us a little snapshot of where we are and how some of the steps that the Board of Trustees have, have taken during the last five years have really positioned us well uh, to be able to deal with some of the issues facing. This number right here, and I realize these are probably very difficult to see, but if you look, this is the carryover. This is the amount of surplus uh, left over from 2012 that we bring into our 2013 budget, and it is the highest number probably in the last seven to ten years at $4.3 million. This is a direct result uh, of all of the steps that we have taken. Uh, we're holding our expenditures. Our budget this year is, again, about $3.1 million, which is about flat uh, for where it has been for the last three, three or four years. And if you look at this, I've, I've underlined this because this is the year in 2015 where our carryover amount slips all the way down to just over, just under a million dollars, which is what the board has always forecast as sort of the minimum amount of carryover that we can ever have. And of course, again, assuming we were to take no steps, which we wouldn't be able to do, the townships can't deficit spend like the federal government, so we wouldn't be able to, to actually do these, but if, if we took no steps, you'd be facing a deficit in 16, and of course, in 17, that, that really accumulates. Uh, but I think the key is this number, and then, but if you look at the revenues in any given year, we start with $2.2 million of revenue forecasted in 13, with just $2 million in 14, $1.9 in 15, $1.9 in 16, and just basically holding, holding steady. These are our projections. Uh, there's a lot of factors that can occur that can throw these numbers off from one year to another. Obviously, we didn't expect the, the estate tax repeal when it happened. So you're looking down the road five years and you're just trying to guess. But that, I think, is, is the key message there, is something needs to be done from a standpoint of revenue enhancement. We've probably cut about as far as we can uh, without really getting into a whole different level uh, of services that we would have to provide. But revenues are going to be dropping and, and then being flat and there that carryover, we're basically living on our, our savings. And we you know, had forecasted this, we will be for the next three years, but a step is gonna be necessary fairly quickly uh, to avoid that. In our police district, we talked a little bit when the levy was passed in 2009, that was the last levy uh, that the police district had. We thought it would last us till the end of this year. Uh, because of restructuring some contracts in 2012, and we've just entered into a new uh, contract with the police department where for three years there are no salary increases. We were able to make some other adjustments uh, in terms of overtime and court time pay. Um, very difficult uh, because some of these have been long traditional uh, benefits that have been provided. Uh, but both parties really work together and in that cooperative spirit we're able to look and pretty, feel pretty confident that the police department is, is going to be in pretty good shape through 2016. You see, they still have a surplus in 17, but for us, we know that that, that number is really here because you have to have about 20% of their expenditures available to operate because the revenues don't fully, aren't fully received until about June of that year. So you have to have about at least 20, 25% of revenues to know you're gonna make it through the first half of the year. Uh, we continue to look for creative ways to, uh, to provide the service necessary, and, uh, but, but to keep our expenses um, at best at, at flat. But there again, you see revenues kind of doing the same type of thing. You're, you're living off that carryover, which, which reduces each year with revenues staying basically flat or decreasing slightly. In the case of our fire and EMS district, uh, the picture is very, very similar. Uh, again, a lot of the credit goes to the firefighters uh, for coming to the table and working very closely with us uh, on the contract and also on benefits. Uh, we've had a very cooperative spirit, and as a result of that, I think we have the same result that we're, uh, we're looking at uh, really for the next three or four years being pretty steady, but we know that you know, something is coming. And so we're, we're thinking about what do we do to deal with this year, and we're talking about what do we do with that at this time so that we can effectuate it uh, when, the, when the dollars uh, won't be there. So as Joe said, we're actually financially probably in the best shape that we've been in the last five years. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't very, very serious challenges on the horizon. Uh, and as we look forward and say, where do we wanna go? Uh, the board's mission statement 
is that we want to continue to be a leader to provide the services. We are a service organization. That's what we exist for is to provide those services. And the challenges that the board has and our staff has is to do those in the most effective and, and uh, efficient manner that we can. So the impacts to you from a tax burden standpoint are minimized while you're still receiving high levels of service. We believe through the staff that we have, uh, we're just blessed in all of our departments to have outstanding staff members who are uh, very creative, we have an outstanding board, and we believe what we'll get through this so that we can continue to bring the value uh, to you, the residents, uh, in terms of what these public services mean to you. Again, our three major objectives for this year are the same that they've really been for the last three years. We need to maintain and achieve that financial stability. Uh, we want to continue to work in our neighborhoods to revitalize and accentuate them. And always, if we don't communicate well, and this is an example of trying to do that and get the word out, uh, none of this really makes a whole lot of difference if we don't find effective ways uh, to get the information uh, to you so that you know what the options are and have a good opportunity for you to communicate back to the board what your desires are, where your objectives and priorities stand. Uh, as we go through, we've adopted our temporary budget for 2013. The permanent budget will be adopted <clears throat> in March. In some ways, this is, uh, this is one of the easiest budgets that we've had. In fact, I think Tom, Tom Bryan had one of the great lines during one of our work sessions, which used to go three nights for about six hours, six or seven hours a night. And this year's budget, budget session lasted about two and a half. And he said, oh, when you don't have any money, there's nothing to argue about, nothing to fight about. They go, they go pretty quick. Uh, that's partially true, uh, but I also think a lot of that is, done, is, is due to the work that the board's done and the, and the work that the staff has done to put us in this position. And we're looking at maintaining a lot of what we put in place uh, in 2012. We've worked very, very hard on succession plans in all of our departments. As some of us get a little older and retirement's not too far away, we want to make sure that we've got the next team ready to come in and continue. Uh, many of the things I talked about, the police contract, uh, that we just successfully negotiated in December uh, for the next three years, which gives us a pretty good outlook of what's going to happen there. Uh, we continue to keep salaries froze at what they were at 2010 levels, uh, and we saved about 4% this year in our insurance, and which is a huge expenditure for the township. That's close to a million dollars uh, of expenditure is our insurance premium, and saving 4% means a, a great deal. We've been innovative. I think something that we'll continue to look for and in ways in the future, uh, we've, the board created an Arts and Enrichment Council. Uh, this is a, ch a charitable nonprofit organization that will begin slowly to be able to handle a great deal uh, of the events and activities. And what this does is it gives us another vehicle by which we can take a burden off of our general fund and allow this organization to ultimately someday be completely self-sufficient. Uh, the executive director of that organization is Kim Flam, it's part of our staff, and the organization is set up that it has three township employees that are actually involved uh, on the board. That's not by accident, that's actually sort of what the law requires or strongly encourages, uh, but it's a way in which we can create this sort of private uh, public organization and take some of the funding burden uh, off of the general fund, while at the same time enhancing the level. We believe arts and, and the types of activities that this uh, organization will be providing are very, 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 very important to our community and to our future as we want to continue to bring in and offer services uh, for people of all walks of life, especially new young families who are looking for a vibrant community in which they wish to live. Uh, infrastructure will continue to be very aggressive and skip, and, and we've been successful in the next round of projects uh, as well. And as I mentioned earlier, John Musman certainly uh, deserves a lot of credit for the activities and, and grants that we've been able to receive in that area. As we go forward, as I mentioned, there's really the questions that we have to answer this year. And they're pretty fundamental. Uh, that's not, none of them are really too big of a surprise. But it is in their basics that these are the tough questions to answer. And between now and the end of the year, I think we as a staff and the board really need to hear from the residents about what are the services that are most important to you? What are the ones that you absolutely can't live without? And not only that, but what service levels do you demand? Uh, unfortunately, these services are expensive. As Joe talked about, we are an employee-driven 
uh, organization and some of the uh, services that we provide. Uh, not only you know, are they expensive from a personnel standpoint, but the equipment to staff them are very, very expensive. So that's probably the biggest question is, is just that level of service and what those services are. We as a staff then figure out what's the most effective way to deliver those, what, what does our organizational structure uh, to do that in the most cost effective way, and then how do we pay for it? You know, what, what are the types uh, of, of options that are available? Joe touched a little bit in the beginning. I think there's sort of, as we look at the options and, and going forward, there, in my mind, there are sort of five major categories or, or options uh, that, we, that we need to look at. If we, you know, we know that the model that we've had for the last 18 to 20 years works and we can provide outstanding service. The problem with that is it's expensive. And it's expensive, especially when you look at the reductions in the amount of revenues that we have coming in. But it's an option. We could simply say, we're going to keep things the way they are, and here's what that's going to cost. The board has evaluated some of those costs. We think they're probably too high on a community that already has fairly high taxes. We can say, well, we're simply going to operate under the current amount of revenue that we have, and we'll make the cuts. You know, there'll be no new taxes, but we'll make the cuts to services. I don't also think, and I don't think the board feels, that that's an option as well, because those services ultimately would be unrecognizable to you, and you would be left with, with very little service. The answer probably lies somewhere in all five, but we need to continue to look at, at all of the options, including providing service to other jurisdictions. We believe that if other jurisdictions, some of the smaller jurisdictions around us were to contract with us, we could provide that service to them, probably give them greater service, and use the fees to offset the loss of fees that we've seen through some of the state cuts. While that makes a lot of sense, uh, it's probably very unlikely given their willingness to do so. So collaboration, joint districts, and what I'll call external consolidations are things we're continuing to have discussions with all of our neighboring communities to see if there's a way in which we can continue to provide either the same or an enhanced level of service at a reduced cost. Those conversations are ongoing. And we're also looking at very creative and innovative ways to look if, if there are ways that we can consolidate internally. Could our police and fire department operate as one, where police officers are also firefighters and EMTs and vice versa? Um, very interesting. We spent a lot of time studying it. It certainly has possibilities, but it is a very difficult and complex uh, to go from where we are today to make that happen. So ultimately, I think there's probably, you know, is, is any one of these the plan? It's probably not. It's probably going to entail pieces and and segments of, of, of each of these five different things as to our long-term solution. And really, that's very similar to what we've been doing uh, for the last five years. But I think we need to make some pretty strong decisions uh, as to where we go into the future on these, and especially that's going to be this year. As far as revenue enhancement, levies and property tax, unfortunately, has been the only way we can raise revenues in the past. Uh, we do do some limited user fees. I'm not sure that user fee is going to be you know, a major answer or a solution for us. Uh, but yet, Joe also talked about the JED, the Joint Economic Development District, and there will be a great deal of discussion taking place on that issue as well. We've looked at ways to fund our infrastructure. Again, we have the traditional means of simply going back to the voters and asking for a road levy. Uh, we've been unsuccessful uh, in doing this the last four times, so I'm not sure that that's a viable solution. We're looking at are there other ways, things like special improvement districts or even assessments to allow uh, these much needed infrastructure projects to get done. Again, all things that we'll be spending a great deal of time this year talking about in much more detail and trying to get feedback from residents as to which are the most viable ways for us to proceed. I think as we, as we leave here today, the message I think from the board and from our staff is we need to continually have public input uh, in 2013, and we need to have you engaged in providing us uh, your feelings about what service and service levels uh, you demand as residents. And more importantly, what's the price you're willing to pay? It's easy to demand the service, but when you, when you see what it costs, that sort of balances it off a little bit. And that's, that's the sweet spot. That's what we need to find uh, is where are, we, where are we hitting the spot that says, you know what, I'm receiving value 
for my tax dollars. I demand this and I'm willing to pay X, but we don't want to make sure that you're paying too much and certainly don't want to make sure that you're receiving uh, too little service for that. There's a lot of opportunities to get engaged. Uh, the first two opportunities will be at the next township trustee meetings. Uh, those are February the 12th and March the 12th. Those are the next two regular board meetings. Uh, and we will have budget uh, hearings during that where we'll be going through some of these options and some of the items that are in this year's budget in a lot more detail. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask specific questions and provide public input. And we'll also be doing this in some way, shape, or form that's a little unknown at this point throughout 2013. But I really do think, and I know the board knows, that at the end of this year, we have to be able to really buckle down and say these are the paths, these are the methods uh, that we've chosen. An example, if we choose to do internal consolidation with police and fire, we know that it's got to start this year so that it's ready in five years because it really will take four to five years to make that transition. If there's going to be a JED, those dollars aren't going to come in immediately either. So there's some really big decisions that have to be made this year so we can have the advantages of whatever that plan uh, is by the end of 2013. The trustees, our township staff, we are available uh, to talk with you one-on-one -on -one after this meeting. So if you'd like to do so, certainly uh, there'll be positioned throughout the hall. If you've got a specific question uh, that you'd like us to answer, we will stick around as part of the social uh, part of the state of the township address. Um, staff as well also, or if you're, you have to go and, you, and you're, you can't stick around or you'd rather do it in writing, you can certainly do so by uh, calling us. Be happy to meet with, uh, with anybody individually if there's a question that you have, uh, email, all of those types of ways in which uh, you can address uh, not only the board but, but our township staff uh, as well, who I'd like to just take a couple of minutes uh, to identify most of them are here uh, today and they will be positioned throughout the room. Uh, Chris Gilbert is in the back. Chris is our uh, assistant township administrator. Chris is also our development services director. Uh, Dorothy Carter, who's our finance director, is not here with us today. Uh, but Larry Mullins, who is our human resources director, is. Larry, if you'd stand, he will be positioned. Chief Dave Heimpolt. Uh, of course, Dave needs uh, little or no introduction. Uh, Dave will be around as well as Assistant Chief Rick Bly will also be here to address any questions relating to police matters. Uh, our Fire Chief Rob Leininger, Chief Leininger here front and center. Uh, John Musselman, our Service Director. Where's John? And he's where'd he go? Hiding in the back there, John. Good place for you. Tom Snyder, back man in the camera, and Kim Flam, who you met when you came in the door, will all be here to answer any uh, specific questions. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for giving up a part of your Sunday to come out uh, and be with us today. And we're certainly interested in hearing your input and working with you throughout 2013 to, uh, to put this puzzle together and uh, move the community forward. Thank you very much.